Hey everybody. Hey, let's talk about the Maverick Trail. Um, I've already done one of these little walk arounds. In fact, it was probably parked in right in the same spot. Um, back when I when I first bought the machine, that was I'd put a few hundred miles on it. Um, kind of did a walk around with kind of my thoughts and opinions and observations of the machine that I had had at that time. So I thought I'd update that and do a new one. Now that I've had it a little longer, do kind of a midterm review slash walk around. Um, I just got it back from the Paiute Trail. I was just gonna pull it out and kind of get it cleaned up and thought, well, this maybe this is a good time to, to do a video. Um, I did about 600 miles on this machine on the Paiute Trail. We used it pretty good, almost daily. I figured a lot of stuff out while I was there. Um, some things were, you know, observations I had already made and then they were just confirmed while I was there and there were some other things that kind of made me rethink my plan, but kind of compare this video to my, my first walk around that I did, kind of see what my thoughts were then and what my thoughts are now. And I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one so you can go watch it if, if you're interested um, if you've already seen it thanks for watching and, and uh, hope this one adds to your I don't know if you're doing you're doing some research and I know a lot of you are I hope this I hope this answers some of your questions but I just kind of wrote down some some pros and cons of this machine and I'm just kind of go down through them and I hate to do one of those 10 things I hate about my Maverick Trail videos. And so I'm not. I'm just going to walk around it again. And by this time, I actually do have some notes and tell you what I observed after using this thing as it was designed and intended to be used on the Maverick, on the, the Paiute Trail. So we'll just kind of get into it. So I'm going to do the cons first just so that I don't end on a low note um, but keep in mind some of these cons are actually pros at the same time so we'll just try to we'll try to work through it and we'll, we'll see what we come up with uh, my first con of this machine my first problem with this machine is the wheelbase um, it makes navigating the really tight 50 inch trails difficult at times because you have to you have to navigate through I mean it's it it's it doesn't look like a long machine and you know and it's not but when you're in the tight trails between trees tight 90 degree turns through trees or whatever there are times you have to make your turn you know you come out and you have to stop and back up and make that turn now I should should also point out that for a few days while I was down at the Paiute Trail, my brother came down and he had a uh, he rented a Razor 900 trail, so it was kind of interesting for a couple of days to follow him around, have him follow me around. Now he's never driven a side by side before, so he you know it, when it comes to that, I have more experience than he does, so it was it was interesting to see how the two machines reacted. So. Uh, kind of use that as an example um, the wheelbase on that Razor 900 is quite a bit shorter so a lot of the turns that I could not make in one shot he could just zip around them in the Razor 900 so that's kind of a one of the bigger problems and the problem with that wheelbase is it gives you a really long belly I high centered on a lot of things um, on Trail 89 there's some gates that you have to go through and they're, they're not just posts but they have a kind of a triangular metal ramp like a cattle guard like a an elk guard or whatever that are a couple feet high i'll put a video up of what i'm talking about here but uh, i would hit the belly on this metal cage so not only driving through the post you're kind of going up and down this triangular hump and i drug the belly Across it got hung up on the belly had to really pop it and drag it across every elk gate on trail 89 I drug the belly this whereas the Razor 900 could go right over no problems and like I say make the same turns um, 
it just gives you a really long belly. Now they've tapered the the belly pad on this, the skid plate, it kind of tapers up towards the back, not like this dramatically, but for illustration purposes, it tapers upward to a point and way back here it tapers back. So it does give you a pretty decent break over angle considering the wheelbase. But I drug the belly a lot. I bottom, bottomed out on rocks a lot. Now, full disclosure, my suspension is set on full soft. I have them cranked all the way down. And knowing what I know now, the next time I go back to the Paiute system, I'll bump the preload up a notch or two just to get that extra ground clearance. Um, but at the same time, I like my suspension soft. I like the machine as low as I can get away with. You know, the lower center of gravity, softer suspension, I like all of that. So anyway, maybe just a notch or two next time I go, but something to be aware of. Um, I did bottom this machine out. Well, I was in the passenger seat, my son was driving, we bottomed out on a rock. I mean, I'll put the video up here, you can take a look at it. But we hit that rock really hard. And I do not see any holes in the skid plate. Thankfully, I mean, see, you can see that's actually a seam, that squiggly line. I don't know how we managed to get through the week without breaking the skid plate, but we didn't. We didn't crack any rockers. We did pretty good. We came down on that rock really hard. Um, that was the first day we were there, so we we learned that lesson immediately. Um, but we did, just not even five minutes later after hitting that rock, we ran over a stick. And here, I'll put this, I'll put the video up so you can see it. But it was just a stick. I mean, you can't even see it in the video, I can't. And we ran over and it, the front tire picked it up and it just wedged right up in there somehow. And it almost catapulted the machine. Just a, It was just a dumb stick. Dumb stick, right time. But it did crack the footwell. You can kind of see it. Pretty good crack right there. Um, again, that was, that was day one. We learned a lot, day one. I don't know why this little part of the machine is not covered, why it's open up to the footwell. Uh, can't explain that. It's just a really good place to throw rocks and sticks and mud and everything else up in that little pocket. Doesn't make any sense to me. So anyway, complaint number one is, is, is the wheelbase of this machine. Now keep in mind that's also one of the pros of this machine, but we'll get to that. Um, I mentioned in my first video this eco mode switch, which I still think is pretty fantastic. Um, it, there's a sport mode, eco mode. Now what, what happens when you put it in eco mode, it just kind of dumbs down the throttle response a little bit. So when your foot's bouncing up and down on the throttle pedal, it's not jerking you around. I still think it's a really great thing. Um, in my original video, I said I use it almost all of the time and I, I use it less now. I don't, I, when I get out on the flat, gravel roads and things, the main, like the 01, things like that. I put it in sport mode because they, after a while, the eco mode, your throttle pedal starts to feel a little bit muddy. Um, like you're using, putting it, pushing a little more pedal than, I don't know, you, you notice it after a while. It's like you're pushing on the pedal. Okay, nothing's happening. So I figure at those times I need to be at sport mode. I feel like I, my foot needs the throttle response. My brain needs it. So I'll switch it to sport mode. But when I get on the tight technical stuff, um, put it back to, to eco mode. I still I still really like the eco mode. I just, like I said, I don't use it quite as much as I did in the beginning. Um, my biggest probably, it's not even so much a con, it's an absolute hatred for me, is I hate these seat belts. I hate these seat belts with a passion. The reason I still have the seat belts and not the harnesses um, is kind of confirmed this last weekend. I I need to be able to move in the seat. I need to be able to lean over the side of the machine. I need to almost get out of the seat a bit and look 
to see the corners when you're going through the gates and things. And that's just, I can't, I don't think I'll be able to move nearly that much with the harnesses. Um, and I do somewhat like the freedom of the body movement that you have with the seat belts when you're jostling on a rocky trail you you're able to just move around a little bit instead of being just planted firmly so so for me i don't think the harnesses are going to work so i'm stuck with these seat belts but i my complaint when i first bought it and i brought it up in my first walk around was that this part of it is really stiff it doesn't fall where it needs to be and the reel that reels it in is not strong enough at all so after you get out you've got this thing where you want it and you get out it it won't reel itself in so this is what you get and it doesn't seem like a big deal but when you get out of it 20 times to move rocks out of the trail and get back in and you've dealt with this stupid seat belt it, you'll, you'll know what i'm talking about but you have to kind of take this and slide it down and then you have to put it where it goes neatly and I'm telling you it doesn't sound like a big deal but when you have to do that every single stinking time that you get out of the machine it's gonna drive you nuts um, I wish that they were a little bit higher up a little bit because it rubs on my neck a little bit if I have a jacket on I can stuff it under my collar it's not so bad but uh, that's probably my one of my biggest complaints about the machine is the seat belts I just this needs to be a little freer to move up and down and the thing that reels it in needs to be a little bit stronger but whatever um the doors i should say the door this door okay is fine the one on the passenger side rattles pretty bad and it doesn't rattle on the latch end it rattles up here on the hinge end so when you're going down bumpy roads you can hear it rattle and it, I don't know, it drives you nuts after a little while um, everything else is pretty tight not a lot of rattles there's a little bit of rattling in this front rack I think it's on this side you know when it's as tight as I can get it it's got the little spacers and everything in there it's tight it's just how it's designed this is a hinge end um, so a couple of little things that annoy me the rattles wise um, and my other probably my one of my larger complaints too is this roof I mean I when I did my first video I hated this roof and I hate it even more now I'm just telling you don't buy this Bimini roof this is the Can-Am Bimini roof it's a pile of crap when it sits out in the sun this edge of it warps and, and it just it it's just a mess when it cools back down it straightens back up but uh, this whole thing just buckles and curves and just warps and, and uh, looks hideous and then my complaint in my original video was the rattling and it still rattles I pushed some little pieces of rubber up between this metal section and the plastic piece to try and just tighten it up a little bit and it didn't stop rattling I think all that did was just change the pitch of the rattle but this very back plastic section right here just vibrates certain rpms you know there's a, a vibration from the engine that kind of you know runs through the chassis and when you get certain rpms this thing just buzzes right in your ear uh, it drives me nuts I, I hate the roof I think it was too expensive um, but you know now that I have it I'm gonna have to use it until it wears out if I tear it open with a tree branch or something um, and I believe that the full Can-Am poly roof the full roof does the same thing as this does it buckles in the heat up in here I've seen that on a few so I don't know do yourself a favor get you a good aluminum roof the um, dragon fire roof I think it's probably one of the best looking roofs out there it's aluminum uh, I don't know but I hate this roof it's a waste of money I wish I'd have bought something else I actually like I said in the in my first video I wanted a full you know canvas full removable roof but at the time that I bought this machine there wasn't one this was the closest thing that they had because I wanted a roof 
that I could put on and take off easily. And this one sort of fits the bill. Um, you undo the straps here and, the, and it kind of rolls up underneath itself. And then there's some straps to secure the rolled up end here. So you have kind of a half roof slash sun visor. But my complaint, other, other complaint from the beginning is that I wish this section was further forward. So it was more sun visor and more open but it is what it is but yeah not a big fan of that roof in fact no i hate that roof um another con of the machine that i found is it squeaks a lot of squeaks um now to be fair 600 miles and it was the dustiest that i have ever seen at the Paiute trail this year they haven't had any rain for a while and it was just really dusty and dust was packed everywhere now i actually sprayed this machine off while I was down there at some point sprayed the dust out of the brakes and the and everything and um, so this is only a few days worth of dust there was what four or five days worth of dust on it before I sprayed it off but the brakes squeak even when the, they're clean the brakes squeak but when they get packed with dust after a few days of dusty riding they, they just howl they're horribly obnoxious um, and then you know the dust gets in the suspension components and the you know I, there's nothing you can do about it i suppose it is what it is but but it, a lot of squeaks mostly the brakes a lot of squeaks and kind of one of the last but certainly not my the least complaint about this machine is the tires i uh i said in my original walk around video that that these carlisle acts are pretty good tires and i stand behind that to a point um, traction wise they're pretty impressive I gotta say I mean we went up the Barney Lake Trail and I don't know if you've been up there I mean it's not the most difficult trail in the world but by Paiute Trail standards it's pretty gnarly trail it's pretty steep and it's pretty rocky and we went up it with these tires um, forward traction is really good um, and in fact I don't know what they call it rear word traction but it, it holds you you know when you're going down a steep hill they hold you back pretty well too they don't slide slide you forward um, I think lateral traction they suffer a little bit but this machine has quite a bit of understeer and it's I blame it on the tires I, I don't think they have a lot of lateral traction I, in fact if you have the rear diff locked on a side hill it likes to slide the rear end will like to, to slide downhill and so lateral traction I don't think they're great and I think that's where a lot of the understeer comes from the problem with the understeer for me is it's it's not predictable I mean it does vary obviously by speed and by terrain and that kind of stuff but once you think you have it figured out as far as speed and terrain how much steering input you need it doesn't act the same way the next time it's just you you go to turn a corner and the machine likes to go straight it starts to turn but not as much anyway not as much as you're turning the wheel not as much as it you feel like it should be so it'll push through the turns a little bit so um but the first time so i should say i we we had our atvs for years still have the one um thousands of miles on almost three thousand miles on the stock tires on my ATV um, my wife's bike had about 2,500 2,800 miles on it son's bike had I don't know 1,500 I don't know we're talking five six thousand miles of riding ATVs and I've carried a, a plug kit with me and an air compressor I always have and I have never had to use them until this tire this machine this week on the Paiute Trail and I didn't do it doing something gnarly. I wasn't on a gnarly radical trail. I was down on the 35 coming into town on the gravel road. I'm driving about 30 miles an hour and blew it, put two holes in it. You can see the two plugs in that tire. Um, it took, I mean, boom, it but took, you know, 10 seconds for it to go completely flat. So I was stuck on the side of the road, plugging the tire and this, these tires are so soft and when they're when they're hot when they get warm they're even softer I mean they get to the point where you feel like when they're out in the heat out in the sun it almost feels like you could push 
a pencil right through that tire. Um, I almost feel like shame on Can-Am literally for putting a four ply tire on a side by side. Um, in my original video, I didn't realize they were four ply tires. I knew they were soft, but I didn't realize how soft they were. Um, and it kind of ruined my last day of riding. I was going to do this video up in the mountains, up in the trail. And I went out to go the next morning or the, my last morning to head up and go for a ride. And this tire was not holding air and I pl kept plugging it, plugging it. I just couldn't, I couldn't get it to hold air. And my wife didn't want to go out with a set of tires that, that I didn't trust and she didn't trust. So our last day on the Pike Trail, we just, we didn't go riding because we didn't trust these tires. And so I did order a new set of tires. I'm not going to tell you what they are. I kind of want to get them on and try them out. Um, we're going to rally in the pines here in a few weeks. We'll try them out up there just to give you a, a review of a tire that I put on here that I actually put some miles on. So stay tuned for that. But these tires, I mean, you can see there's just how chunked up they are. Um, just, I don't know, just chunks missing out of these tires. And there's a lot of cracks if I could get it to show up on camera. A lot of the treads have have these cracks along the bottom of them. Anyway, uh, traction wise, like I said, traction wise, they're they they do pretty well. They really do. They po took us everywhere I pointed it, but they're just they're just soft. They're just they're they're just chunking apart. I was. I had said in my original video that I was going to run these tires until I wear them out because um, I'd already paid for them. But when it gets to the point where I'm, you know, I drive for five hours to spend a week down on the Piute Trail and, and I can't take this machine out because I don't trust the tires, then they got to go. And I still, I, I feel like I would never wear these tires out. I'm afraid that I'd rip a sidewall or, I mean, I don't know. I, I think I'd destroy these tires before I actually wore them out. So they're coming off. So stay tuned to see what comes on. Um, but that's pretty much my list of cons. So those are my complaints. Those are the things that I that I learned this week while I was down, down riding. Um, so how about we talk about some of the things I really like about this machine. So it took a, it took a little learning. It took that first day of hitting rocks at, and, and beating it up. But, but uh, after a day or two of getting a feel for it and getting used to it, um, it felt okay. The first day or two, I, I struggled a little bit, thought maybe I should have bought a razor. But uh, so, one of the things that I really like about this machine is one of those things I hate about this machine is the wheelbase. Um, for all the things that I said I don't like about it, um, the nice thing about it is you really get a good ride out of this machine. Having that long wheelbase, it just rides smooth. It rides really great. It really does. Um, like again, I said I got my suspension set on soft. The tires are set. 12 PSI in the front, which is the maximum recommended. I did that just to try to get a stiff sidewall, eliminate some of that, some of the body roll and things like that. I run at 15 PSI in the back, which I think is the minimum recommended. Um, but I love the ride of this machine. It rides really, 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 really nice. I, the seating position of it compared to the Razor 900. Now I didn't drive the Razor 900. I sat in it. Um, but the seating position is just, it's lower, lower and more set back. It, it, it feels like, as whereas the razor, you're sitting up kind of high and kind of straight up and down. Um, that wheelbase gives you a lot more room in the cab, a lot more leg room. It just, it just feels better. It, it, the, in my opinion, the, the, in the cab of this thing is where this machine really shines. And you just couldn't get it without this long wheelbase. So, yeah, that's that's one of the things that I really love about it too. Is 
is just the ride, the room, everything else that comes along with that extra wheelbase. Um, I, uh, I really like the doors. I like having them. I, you feel a little more secure in there. I did put the, uh, the weather stripping, the Can-Am factory weather stripping on the doors. It kind of makes a pretty big difference in keeping the dust out of here and, and water and everything else. And it does help with the door rattling quite a bit. It doesn't rattle as much as it used to. It takes a pretty big impact to get that to bounce, whereas it used to just rattle constantly. That was the biggest reason I put the weather stripping on, which is to quiet the doors down. I really like the doors, um, but I guess we're supposed to be talking about the things I like. But since we're talking about doors, they're a little bit high. Now, it, 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 your, it keeps your shoulder in, which I'm sure was the idea. But if you wear a helmet like I do and you're trying to look over the side, you're going to hit your helmet. And I have a Cena 20S on the side of my helmet. And I hit the knob of that Cena right here whenever I look over to look at the corner of the machine going through a gate or something. Um, you do get used to it. You just have to put your head up here. We're in the lower part to look out and over. Um, I like I like the full doors. Um, the 900, the Razor my brother had, didn't even have the lower doors in it. It was just the, I don't know what you call it, a quarter door. And I don't know, maybe, maybe it would be good for getting a little ventilation because that was one thing my wife noticed is that we get plenty of air up here on our upper body, but there's no air circulating down here. So I could see maybe that that would be nice to have a little air flowing around in here, but then you're going to get the dust and everything else. So I don't know. I, I really like the doors. I like that they swing the right way instead of the suicide doors. Um, but one of my next things I really like are the seats. I mean, we put some several 60, 70 and 80. I think our longest ride was 88 miles in a day. And the seats are really comfortable. They really are. Like I say, they don't, they don't look like much, but I think they're really comfortable. Um, you sweat a little bit. If you have a, a t-shirt that has a big screen print on the back, it, you're gonna sweat against this, this vinyl. Um, I learned not to wear those kind of, but as far as just comfort, overall comfort goes, I, I really like the seats. I think they're, I think they're great. I think they're comfortable. I think they're angled just right. Big fan of the seats. I also like where everything is um, within reach. The steering wheel is, is nice and it's comfortable. It's got a, it's got a good shape to it. It's got a little heft. It just, it, it feels pretty good. It's not as good as some of the fancy aftermarket ones, but for, for a factory steering wheel, I think it's pretty great. I like the pod that tilts up and down with it. Um, just the ergonomics of the cab are really great. I, 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 I kind of am not a huge fan. I mean, okay, I like the dead pedal. The angle of it is good, but I almost feel like my leg would, my foot would love it if it was out here, but you know, it's a 50 inch machine, so that's where it is. But I, I find myself with my foot on the dead pedal and I, I lean my knee against the door. I lean my knee against the center console. Anyway, it, it's, I hate to complain about the, the dead pedal, but that's where it is. If it was four inches out here, well, it can't be. So I, I do like it. There's, there's two dead pedals on the passenger side, my wife. You know, she was pretty comfortable over there, no complaints. Um, yeah, the, the ergonomics of the cab, I think, are just a huge, huge plus. Big, big fan. Um, I like the storage compartments. Um, didn't realize how much I liked them until, you know, my brother had that razor and it has a little cubby box down there. Um, I have that huge storage box up here and this little one up here. Um, I, I don't know, I, I, big fan of the interior. I mean, this box is, is pretty good sized. Um, you put all your, all the stuff you need kind of readily available up in there. And uh, anyway, that's, that's, that's the reason I bought this machine in the first place, I think was, you know, I, there was a Razor 900 on the showroom next to this one and kind of going back and forth and just, just sitting, and just sitting in the two Right, you know, one after the other, 
the cabin. That's the big selling point for this. That's the reason I bought it, I think, was, the, was just the way the cabin felt. Um, another big benefit, I'm, I'm a big fan of the power. I know a lot of the guys really want the programmers and they want to do all this stuff. They want to make more power, and I just, I'm not interested in that. This is a trail machine. I bought it to drive on the trails. And it has plenty of power. It really does. I mean, it. You can come in on the, on some of the roads into town, and you know you can cruise at 40, 45. It's it's eff, it's effortless. And when you push on the gas, it goes even more. Um, a big fan of the power. It'll power you out of the situations you need it to. It'll get you up to the speeds you need it to go. Um, big fan of the power of the machine. Um, and one of the things I said, you know, my complaints was that eco mode that it starts to feel a little muddy after a while. That is also one of my one of my pros of this machine is that eco mode switch. I really like having it. I you find yourself, you know, when I've been in sport mode and I forgot to shut it off, and I end up on a little tight section of trail or rocky section of trail, and I start jerking around. It's like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm and I'm a little better at my foot control than which is I think why I use it less. But there's just situations when you're in a bouncy section of trail and rocks that it's nice to hit that eco mode and, and just kind of muddy that throttle up a little bit. So I'm a big, big fan of that. I also like the unlocking rear differential. I, I, that was a big selling point for me. I mean, they're not even available in the Razor 900s anymore. They used to have the turf mode, but they got rid of it in 2018. So you can't even unlock the rear diff. I like to have it unlocked, even on the really tight sections of the 50 inch trails, I like to unlock that rear diff because it makes turning the corners a little bit easier. I, if, if the rear diff is locked and you're making trying to make a really tight turn, you'll feel the rear end of the machine trying to push you straight while the front end of the machine is trying to pull you around the corner. You feel each end of the chassis kind of working against each other a little bit. So I leave the rear diff unlocked. It also helps when you reach a side hill. It doesn't feel like the rear end is trying to slide downhill. So I, I have it unlocked almost all the time. If I'm going to go straight up something or straight down something kind of gnarly, I'll lock it. Um, if I get out on a section of gravel road with some hills and things like that, and I don't want to be in four wheel drive and I don't want one tire doing all the work back here, I'll lock the rear diff and leave the front end, leave it in two-wheel drive with the rear diff locked out on the gravel roads. Um, I really like it. I like when you get back and you finally hit asphalt, you know, and there's times down on the Pirate Trail you're on asphalt, being able to unlock it. Um, big fan of it. I also still really appreciate the fact that you can unlock it separate from the four-wheel drive switch, um, that it's its own switch. Big fan of the unlocking rear differential. Glad it's there. And, uh, the front differential surprised me. I've heard people complain about Can-Am's Crisco lock, they call it. I, it, it worked for me. I don't know how to explain it. It, uh, it, it, it doesn't drag on the steering wheel like a full locked front diff like on a Polaris does. You can kind of feel it in your steering a little bit on the Polaris. Um, when you're in four wheel drive, you don't feel it in this so much. And it just, it engages quickly it, and it goes. I, 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 I never noticed any wheel spin. My mind never went, wow, that was an awful lot of wheel spin before the front diff engaged. That never happened once. It just, you pointed it and even on some really kind of off cambery stuff, it totally did its job. Zero complaints about the front differential. The four wheel drive works really great. We went up some, like I say, we went up the Barney Lake Trail. I mean, that's just a steep, rocky mess and up it went. Uh, big fan, big fan of the four-wheel drive. It works well. Uh, if I had a complaint about either one of those, the, the front for the four-wheel drive or the rear diff is the fact that you have to be stopped. You can't shift them on the fly. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but that's what the manual says to do. And in most cases, you know, we go through a 50-inch gate and we shift the transmission into low and we shift it into four-wheel drive and you know because we're stopped anyway so it, it's never been a huge deal but there are times when you think well you know i should lock the rear diff gotta stop lock it go again um, it's annoying but it's certainly not a deal breaker um, 
I'm also a big fan of this Rifab box. I got to tell you, you know, 600 miles of dust was pounded against the back of this machine, you know, all week long and everything inside the box stayed clean. The only time I got dust in the box and I guess there's no way around it is when I open it, you know, you'll get a little draft of in there. Um, I get dust from throwing my dusty jacket in there. And then when, but when you close it and you get the clunk, you'll see a boof of dust come out of the side. I, uh, now the only dust I ever got in there was the dust that I put in there. It really sealed up. It did, it did its job really fantastic. It's big enough. We have two coolers and all of my tools and rain gear and jackets and I mean, you name it, plenty of room. Big fan of that. I didn't get to use the mud flaps much, a few puddles we went through. But uh, yeah, those all performed fantastic. Um, so a few things that I learned in my experience. Um, the easiest way to gain some ground clearance is to put a little bit bigger tire on it. And I had planned on putting a, probably a 28 by 10 tire all around. Um, I thought I could get away with it, but I found out I can't. So the reason I, okay, so my garage and my toy hauler is 10 feet long, exactly, from the bulkhead to the ramp gate. It's exactly 10 feet long. And this machine as it sits right now, I'm just guessing that it is nine feet, 11 and a half inches long. So now where the tires are the, you know, the tires stick back, they're the furthest thing rearward. So any change in diameter of the tire is gonna increase your overall length. Just, that's just how this machine is. So I go a 28 inch tire, I'm gonna gain another inch, you know, in theory, if this is a 26, which it's, it is, but it's not. Um, so I could gain an inch, maybe more, in overall length, and it won't fit in my garage. So for me, I cannot go a bigger tire. Um, I can't even go a wider tire. So I don't know if this is, I don't know how many of you know, I don't know if the secret's out, but this, this machine is not a 50 inch machine. Well, it is a 50 inch machine, but it does not measure 50 inches. It's 51 from the outside of the, of the rear tire to the outside of that rear tire is 51 inches and the front is 50.5 from outside tire to outside tire. And I get a, I get the question a lot of, well, what tires can you put on it to stay at 50 inches? Well, you're not at 50 inches to begin with. The only thing you can hope to do is stay at 51. And if I added a 10 inch tire, I would, you know, theoretically gain an inch. So I'd be at 52, um, which I really thought I could get away with. And after going through some of the gates down on the Paiute Trail, here, I'll put a video up. This is the, that's the gate where the 65 reaches the 78, right above Monroe. That's one of the tightest gates there that I know of. There are a few that are tighter. Um, and you'll see this one, I'll put this one up again where I go up the 80, 89, this is at the bottom end of the 89, where I drag the belly of the machine, but you'll see how tight it is there. But I just, I, I can't go any wider. I really can't. So I have to kind of rethink my whole tire theory. So I'm gonna swallow my pride and I'm gonna get a 27 inch tire. That'll make me a little bit longer, but I think I can get away with it. And I'm going to go nine inches wide all the way around just because I cannot go any wider. I cannot go any bigger. So I got to do what I got to do. I mean, I bought this machine to ride the Paiute Trail. I mean, I've accessorized it and built it. Everything I did to it was for riding on the Paiute Trail. So that's my benchmark. If, if, if I make a modification that makes it so I can't ride on the 50 inch trails down there, then there's no point. So, so yeah, I, uh, my tire selection, like I say, my dreams and my aspirations of tires just kind of got shot down the shot down. So I'm going to, going to have to stay with a small, a little bit smaller tire, go a little bigger, but I'm going to be not what I wanted. So, um, another thing I learned, I think I mentioned that before I go down there, 
bump the preload up just to get a little bit more ground clearance out of it that would have gone a long way and when I was down there I was down there by myself my wife had taken the truck home and so I didn't have a jack I didn't have anything to jack the thing up and uh, to take the weight off to to adjust the preload on them so I was kind of stuck and I just so I just kind of changed where I rode it's like I, I just started going on places that ground clearance wasn't really an issue um, skid plates I think it's certainly something to think about I mean I know guys have broken theirs I've seen it I've seen the pictures um, I don't know how I mean honestly in that video we hit that rock pretty damn hard and I didn't break mine so I don't know what it takes to break them and I hope I never found out or never find out but uh, yeah I if somebody makes a, a decent skid plate you know I think that's something in the future that I may have to look into um, but we'll see I'm in no big hurry for that at the moment but I just think because of because of the belly because of this long wheelbase it's it's something to think about it's just some some good thick heavy aftermarket skid plates I'm kind of my I personally am kind of the opinion I like the plastic skid plates just because they're a little bit quieter um, than the aluminum sometimes the aluminum you can get some rocks up in on top of them and they rattle and I Lord knows I don't need any more rattles you know plus the aluminum you get a bang in it and a dent in it and you always have a dent in it whereas the plastic ones will kind of retain their shape I don't know I, I'm leaning towards a plastic set um, but I think probably one of the bigger things I learned this week was just how to drive this thing you uh, you have to get out sometimes and you have to move rocks out of the way some you know big rocks that are right in the middle of the trail you're not going to go over them you, and it's it's starts to mess with your mind a little bit you get these little rocks that you feel like you drag on and then you go over this big rock and you're kind of sucking seed as you're crawling over this big rock and it doesn't hit and I don't know but just learning how to drive it learning how to how to work around the rocks another big thing was to how to how to make the turns a little more successfully you know to to make them wide you you know you got to take the front end a little further past until your rear end hits the inside of where you want to go and then you swing the front end over just I think overall the biggest thing I learned was just how to drive it so um, the first few days I was kind of wondering if I bought the right machine but I gotta tell you by the end of the week I, I did I bought the right machine I still I'm a big fan of it I still I, st I still really like it I having the razor there was a nice kind of a reference point something to look at and watch and, and compare the two and and uh, like I say I didn't drive it I just watched it and even with the things that it the turns that it made easier than I did and the humps that it went over without bottoming out and everything else I I'll still take this machine you know same price is one thing I pointed out to my brother is they have the exact same retail price this machine and the one that he had and I was like you know you point out look mine comes with full doors you know mine comes with an unlocking rear differential mine comes with the eco mode switch you now granted no I cannot shift it into two and four wheel drive on the fly like you can but uh, I don't know for the money I still think it's the best deal so anyway this is just kind of an after action report I suppose I spent the week um, I want to say beating the crap out of it I really didn't but I used it for what Can-Am designed it to be used for and I used it that to the fullest 600 miles of of some pretty intense trail riding on this guy out in uh, it comes home I mean I want to say flying colors but those tires are gonna be flying to the landfill well, I'll keep one maybe as a spare, but um, got a few scratches on it, but that's how it goes. Um, yeah, so anyway, my up-to-date thoughts. Um, if you're going to rally in the pines here a few weeks, you know, come find me. I'd sure like to talk to you. You know, if you've got one of these things, I'd sure like to compare notes and, and uh, I don't know, just sit around. Uh, come find my trailer and sit down and we'll have a beer and anyway yeah if you're rallying the pines come look me up I'd love to meet you but uh, yeah the new tires I'll have on for that 
But yeah, anyway, hey, thanks for watching, you guys. Um, I got a lot of video. I got 300 and something gigs of GoPro video while I was down there. So I'm gonna be posting a lot of that kind of sporadically. I got some video of the Barney Lake Trail and and uh, the Max Reed Trail, um, Trail 89, things like that. Um, so anyway, watch for that, and uh, we'll see you guys out on the trail.